I would like to welcome you to this informational video. You are more than likely watching this because you or someone you love was recently diagnosed with cancer. I just want to say I'm sorry. Cancer can be very tough. It can be challenging and sometimes it just doesn't seem fair. All of us at Ironwood want you to know we are committed and dedicated to providing the very best possible care. This video is going to go over different information regarding your cancer and the use of medications as part of your treatment plan. Your nurse should have provided you with a treatment bag. Inside the bag is a paper and a pen. Go ahead and pull that out to write down any questions you may have. When your nurse returns after this video, she'll go over those questions with you. Inside the bag are a number of different things such as your chemotherapy resource guide as well as a folder filled with different services we offer. Your nurse will also provide a list of specific medications that you will be receiving during your treatment. Let's first start by talking about cancer in general. There may be things you know about your cancer diagnosis and some things that you feel you don't know yet. Cancer is a disease caused by the uncontrolled growth and development of abnormal cells in your body. While not all cancer is hereditary, there is a genetic component. These abnormal cells are smart and they have the ability to continue to grow and divide within your body's systems. Those cells can then spread or travel to other parts of the body. Typically, someone will either feel physical abnormality on the body or some abnormalities are picked up on a scan. You may also have been feeling some type of symptoms which caused you to go to your doctor and have further testing. If further testing is required, you will go through some type of imaging. If an abnormality is found, more than likely you will be recommended to undergo a biopsy. Once the biopsy is completed, the tissue will be sent to a lab to be analyzed. After it is analyzed, we will be able to tell if you have cancer. From that point forward, you may be recommended to have some type of surgery, IV therapy, or oral therapy, and or radiation therapy. Your doctor has prescribed a treatment especially for you. I would like to take a few minutes to discuss the three most common types of IV therapy. Chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and targeted therapy. Your doctor may have prescribed one of these medications or a combination of different therapies. What is chemotherapy? Chemotherapy is the use of chemicals to destroy abnormal cells that are growing in the body. What is immunotherapy? Immunotherapy is designed to stimulate the body's immune system to better recognize and fight cancer. What is targeted therapy? Targeted therapy drugs are designed to block the growth and spread of cancer by preventing cancer cells from growing and dividing, destroying them directly, or helping other therapies such as chemotherapy work better. Your treatment can be administered in different ways or routes. Typically when you come in for a treatment, you will be given an IV therapy through a vein in your arm or portacath. A portacath is a venous access device placed underneath the skin in your chest. This is done surgically. Treatments may be delivered by IV, injection, or orally. Depending on what type of treatment you need and what type of cancer you have will depend on what route of chemotherapy we administer. What's important to know is that while chemotherapy does destroy abnormal cells, it can unfortunately kill or destroy some of your healthy cells in your body as well. These cells are often found in your hair and your GI tract or in your bone marrow. This is where the symptoms from chemotherapy can come from. 
During your educational teach, your nurse will go over the specific medications that you will receive. We will discuss some of the basic and common effects that can occur. What's important to remember is not all of the side effects that we talk about today can happen with your specific regimen. And your doctor will prescribe medications to help with managing them. The most common side effect to treatment is fatigue. Treatments can also have effects on your gastrointestinal system. This can cause side effects such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and constipation. If nausea is a well-known side effect, you will be prescribed anti-nausea medication to your preferred pharmacy. If you're experiencing diarrhea or constipation, we would first have you use over-the-counter medications as described in your handbook. However, if this is not working, we want you to let the doctor know and we will work on getting you a different medication to help with this side effect. Another side effect that it can occur is generalized aches and pains. If you should experience any type of aches and pains, we want you to be sure that you let your doctor know right away as it is our goal to make sure that we eliminate any discomfort that you may be having. Another side effect is something known as neuropathy. This is a feeling of sensation of pins and needles in your hands and sometimes your feet. What's important about neuropathy is that you let us know as soon as you start experiencing this symptom. Another symptom might be skin changes, rash, or nail changes. With any of these symptoms, if you should have them, it's important for you to let your nursing staff or your doctor know right away. Chemotherapy can also lower your blood counts because chemotherapy have effects on abnormal cells as well as healthy cells. It is important that prior to each infusion, you have your blood levels drawn at the lab. This is something your doctor will look over very carefully to assure that your blood counts are not too low before you receive the treatment. If for some reason your blood counts are out of normal range, your doctor may postpone your treatment to allow your body to recover before the next infusion. Symptoms of low blood counts include feeling excessively tired, bruising easily, bloody nose, bleeding from the gums when you brush your teeth, having blood in your urine or stool, and the biggest one that we watch out for is fever. If you are experiencing any unusual or concerning symptoms, including a temperature of 100.5 or greater, we want you to call us right away. Your temperature is an important measurement to watch because if it is elevated, it may indicate your white blood cell counts are low, which can put you at more risk for infection. A fever may be your first symptoms you may experience. Other symptoms commonly known for infection are sore throat, runny nose, or cough. If you have an incision or wound that doesn't seem to be healing, this could also be an indication of infection. Please let your doctor or nurse know if you are having any of these issues prior to therapy. What is important to share and discuss with your doctor prior to therapy? It is important to discuss all medical history, such as heart or lung disease. If this is the case, your doctor will adjust your treatment regimen and provide with medications that have less effects on your heart or lungs. It is also important that you provide your doctor with a current up-to-date list of all medications, including over-the-counter and homeopathic remedies you may use in conjunction with your treatment. If you are prescribed pain medications from any other provider, this is also an important conversation to have with your doctor. If you have a change in medication while on therapy, please make sure you are updating your doctor or nurse immediately so we can check for interactions. You may at some point also have some type of genetic testing or tumor analysis completed 
during your first days of diagnosis. This will look at both your genetic makeup and those types of abnormal cells found in your tumor. If this is the case, your doctor can use this information as a guide to your specific treatment plan and ensure that you are getting the best medicines to help destroy these abnormal cells. The prescribed treatment may be used at various points throughout your cancer diagnosis, like we discussed earlier. You may undergo surgical intervention first and then follow with chemo or radiation. However, sometimes it's determined that it's best to start your treatment plan with chemotherapy and possibly have surgery after. Your doctor will go over the plan of therapy prescribed with you. Another question that you may have is, how is your dose determined? Or how much treatment should you be getting? There are many factors that your doctor will look at in deciding your regimen. Treatments are typically based off a number of different factors, such as your age, your weight, your height, your gender, and then any lab values that you have prior to and during your chemo regimen. This is why it's important also that you have your routine blood work drawn prior to your infusions. We will look at things like your kidney function, your liver function, as well as your overall blood counts to assure we are giving you the correct dose safely. If you or your family have any questions, they can let us know when you receive your chemo treatments. On your first day of treatment, you will check in at the front desk and then we will bring you back to either see your physician or directly into the infusion suite. When you enter the infusion room, your weight, blood pressure, and heart rate will be measured by a nursing assistant. We measure your weight prior to each treatment to determine the correct dose of medication as ordered. On your arrival, your nurse is going to review your labs and plan a care and then come out to meet you and ask how you're feeling. If you're having any symptoms or if anything is bothering you, this is the time to let us know how you're doing. We really want you to be honest. Let the doctor or nurse know if you have any questions or concerns regarding your treatment. There are no silly questions. Your safety is important and we may want to reevaluate the therapy based on side effects you are experiencing. We do recommend that you bring one family member with you into your first treatment. However, due to limitations in space, we do not recommend bringing more than one family member. It's important to mention if the person that you're bringing to your treatment with you isn't feeling well or sick, we would ask that you not bring them into the infusion room because there are many different patients receiving their infusions and chemotherapy regimens. A sick family member in the infusion room puts our patients at risk to developing infection. Also, children under the age of 12 are not permitted in the infusion room for safety reasons. Once all of this has been completed, your nurse will start your infusion. With the treatments that have well-known side effects, we may give you something called pre-medications. These medications may include steroids or anti-nausea meds. We want to make sure that you do not have any allergic or adverse reactions to the medication. We want to make sure that you're as comfortable as possible and prepare your body for any type of reaction. If at any point during your infusion, you feel anything different, such as warm, chills, dizziness, or anything that's not normal, please inform your infusion nurse as soon as possible. The sooner we treat these symptoms, the better. The infusion room suite does have some warm blankets and pillows, as well as snacks and drinks available to you. You're welcome to bring your own food and snacks without odors into the infusion room. Should you need a refrigerator, please inform your infusion room nurse. Our infusion room is also equipped with Wi-Fi and magazines to occupy the time during your treatment. Especially for your first infusion, we would like to have a family member or loved one accompany you just in case you have any type of reaction to some of these medications. Sometimes they can cause effects such as dizziness, nausea, and sleepiness. We want to ensure your safety after your first infusion and recommend that someone transport you home after your first infusion. At this time, feel free to grab your resource guide. This is just a basic outline and guideline that goes over some brief and distinct points during your chemotherapy regimen. We want you to remain hydrated throughout the day, and we also want you to eat foods that agree with you and maintain a good calorie intake. 
A recommendation if you are unable to eat large meals is to eat smaller meals more frequently. Sometimes during your chemotherapy regimen, you may find things that certain foods taste differently. Whatever seems to work best and is appealing to you during your treatment, go ahead and have it. It's important to maintain good oral hygiene during your treatment as well. We want you to make sure that you brush your teeth with a soft toothbrush. We recommend that you do not floss during this time because chemotherapy can alter your blood counts. It may make you more at risk for bleeding. There is also a recipe under sore mouth and throat for oral care using baking soda and a salt solution. You also may notice that you become more sensitive to the sun. It is so important that if you're going to be in the sun to wear sunscreen, we recommend SPF 15 or higher. If you're going to be outside for long periods of time, be sure to stay hydrated, wear a hat and long sleeves. It's important that you make sure and get plenty of rest during your treatment. If you feel like you're getting tired or fatigued, what is best is to go ahead and rest. I like to tell my patients that you can work up to the level of fatigue, but if you get that overwhelming feeling that you need to sit down, it's time to sit down. Rest is very important because it minimizes the risk and spread of infection or germs. Because your chemotherapy can lower your blood counts, it puts you more at risk for infection. Therefore, it's important that you frequently and thoroughly wash your hands. When you're out in public, you wanna wash your hands if you're touching shopping carts, door handles, public restrooms. In your own home, you even wanna to stress to wash your hands. Use soap or hand sanitizer. This should be available to your guests that are coming in and out of your home. It's also appropriate for you to ask them to also have good hand hygiene. This keeps your risk from infection very low. It's important to also practice pregnancy prevention while receiving these medications. This is something that your doctor will talk to you specifically about during your visit but these medications can cause side effects and potentially harm to a fetus. If you're thinking about becoming pregnant, make sure that this is a topic that you discuss with your provider. One of the do's on the list is if you're having any questions or concern, please make sure and call our office and speak to one of our nurses. We are always here to answer the questions that you have. Here are a couple of don'ts that we ask you not to do. We would first the main source of your hydration not come from caffeinated products such as sodas, coffees, and teas. They are acceptable in moderation, but for what's most important is to drink water or other hydrating beverages such as sports drinks or things with electrolytes. We also recommend that you do not take any aspirin-based products over the counter unless it's directed by your physician or your nurse. One of the most important things to stress is if you know someone is ill and you're going to visit, we ask that you postpone the visit until they feel better. We really don't want you to have exposure to someone who you know is sick. When your blood counts are low and your levels may already be low from treatment themselves, we are protecting you from developing any type of infection. However, if you need to work or go have exposure to someone that may be ill, we just wanna make sure that you practice best hygiene, which is hand washing and potentially wearing a mask if you feel comfortable. There are various different team members here at Ironwood that will contact you during your treatment. One person who you will meet is our financial counselor. This is someone who is available to you to assist you with your estimated cost as well as coordinate with your insurance company. Lastly, Ironwood offers a variety of different classes and support groups and other type of resources within various campuses. We have classes for you and your loved ones to attend. In your new patient guide, we have provided a calendar with these events for you and your family to attend. You can also find them online on our website at ironwoodcrc.com. This video and all the information that we've discussed is available on our website for you and your family to view. If you or your family members have any questions, they can let us know when you receive your chemo treatments. Thank you for watching this video. I know that this is a very difficult time for you or your loved ones. Please rest assured that we at Ironwood are committed to providing you the highest quality of care possible. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out and we'll be more than happy to assist you. Thank you very much.